In this video, I'll be showing you how to use the cold card queue with Sparrow Wallet on desktop, fully air gapped and using all best practice. In my previous video, I showed you how to actually set up your cold card, but this video is all about how to use it. First, I will show you how to export your wallet from cold card onto Sparrow. Then I will show you how to receive Bitcoin. And then I'll show you how to send Bitcoin by signing that transaction offline with the cold card. Your seed phrase and your private keys will never leave this device, keeping your Bitcoin safe and secure. If you would like to deep dive into Bitcoin security, I teach everything I know about how wallets work and how to structure them in the bitcoincourse.com. So let's get our cold card booted up and begin the process. Okay, here I have my cold card queue and I will power it on by holding the power button. I have some batteries in the back, so it will power on and then I need to insert my pin. So first I will fill in my pin prefix and then click on enter. And now it will show me my anti-phishing words, which are correct. They are balanced and awkward. Now I will fill in my pin suffix. All right, so my suffix is in, I will click on enter and now it will unlock my cold card queue. And there we go, we are now in the cold card. Now in my previous video, I showed you how to create a new Bitcoin seed phrase within the cold card queue. I have already done this and I have a Bitcoin wallet ready to be exported to Sparrow. If you have not created a seed phrase yet, you will have the option to create new seed words at the top of your screen. Simply click on create new seed words and select either 12 or 24 words I would recommend using 24 words. Then you can back up your seed phrase by writing it down and keeping that somewhere safe and secure. I have already created a seed. We can tell because I do not have the option that says new seed words. So we can go ahead and now export this wallet onto Sparrow Wallet on desktop. To do this, we want to scroll down to advanced forward slash tools and then click on enter. Then we will scroll down to export wallet and click on enter. And then we need to find Sparrow Wallet or whichever wallet you want to use. So Sparrow Wallet is the third option right over there. I will click on enter. Now the cold card will give you some information here. It says this saves a JSON file to use with Sparrow Wallet. Works for both single signature and multi-sig wallets. Press one to enter a non-zero account number. Then it says this file created is sensitive in terms of, so we'll scroll down in terms of privacy, but should not compromise your funds directly. So in this step, we are exporting the cold cards public key only, not the private key in any way. So that's why it's saying this uh, might impact your privacy because you're going to export all your Bitcoin addresses. However, it will not compromise your funds because the private key will remain on the cold card. That will not be exported. Now, if we scroll up, it also said, press one to enter a non-zero account number. In this video, and if you're just creating your wallet for the first time, you will just want to be using the standard account number. So don't click one, you can just proceed by clicking enter. And there we go, it says generating. And now it gives us a few options. We can either press one to save spare wallet file to an SD card. We can click B for the lower slot or QR to show the QR code. Pressing one will save the file to this SD card slot. Pressing B will save to this SD card slot. And pressing QR will show a QR code version of your public keys. So in this video, we will be using QR codes. So what we'll be doing is clicking QR to the top left of the cold card here. And now it will start showing a QR code which we can export to Sparrow Wallet. So I'm going to leave this aside for a moment and we're going to jump into Sparrow real quick. Here on my computer, I'm going to launch Sparrow Wallet and then within Sparrow Wallet, we need to create a new wallet. So I will click on new wallet right over here. Then we'll give it a name. So for this example, I'll just say CCQ demo, but of course just name this wallet whatever you think is best. Then you can click on create wallet and now we see a few options here. So we're going to just leave everything on the default. All we need to do is click on air gapped hardware wallet over here. And to the top of our screen, we'll see cold card as an option. 
we are using a QR code, so we'll need to scan that QR. If you are using the SD card option, you would click on import file. I will now click on scan and show the QR code to my computer. Now just note that the cold card is displaying a few different QR codes, so it may take a moment to pick up the entire QR, and there we go, we have now imported that into our Sparrow wallet. So here on the cold card, we no longer need this QR, so I'll simply click on cancel until I am all the way back at the home screen, and we will leave this be. Just one thing I want you to take note of is at the top right of your cold card, you will see a little code. This is your wallet's fingerprint. So as you can see there, there is my fingerprint. Now we'll take a look at Sparrow again and what we see in cold card should match Sparrow. Here in Sparrow, we have imported the wallet and we can see the master fingerprint here, which we just saw on the cold card. And I can see that this master fingerprint matches what I see on the cold card. So I know I've exported the correct wallet. Now here is our public key and you can also switch this to see your Zpub and your Xpub, which are both just different public keys. Everything is imported here. This is an air-gapped cold card. So I can now click on apply at the bottom right and it will ask you if you want a password. Now, assuming that you are going to store Bitcoin in this wallet, I do recommend setting a good password just so that if anybody finds your computer, they can't access your wallet file. Although they can't spend your Bitcoin without the cold card itself, they will be able to see how much Bitcoin you have. So I am not going to set a password just for this demonstration, but I recommend that you do. So I'll click on no password. And now we have a fully functional Bitcoin wallet that is effectively connected to our cold card. So if we click on transactions, we'll see we have no transactions and we can actually start receiving Bitcoin now by clicking receive. You can also click on addresses to see all your Bitcoin addresses. And in UTXOs, we will see nothing because we haven't received Bitcoin quite yet. So what I'm going to do now is receive some Bitcoin into my cold card. To do this, we want to click receive over here and it's going to display my Bitcoin address. So I'm going to send some funds from a demo wallet that I have to this Bitcoin address. First, I will give it a label. I always recommend setting a label and the label should be where your funds are coming from. In this case, I will send them from my demo wallet. So I'll simply leave it as demo wallet. But if you're withdrawing from a Coinbase or Kraken or something like that, you should set the exchange's name as the label. I do explain labels and UTXOs more in depth in the bitcoincourse.com. So check that out if you would like a deeper dive. Now, if you are receiving a larger amount of Bitcoin, you might want to verify that the address you see in Sparrow is actually correct. So to do this, in Sparrow, I'm going to make this QR code big. And then in my cold card, I'm going to go down and click on scan any QR code. Now my QR code scanner is on and I'm going to scan that Bitcoin address. So there's the QR code and here is my cold card. I'll simply point that at the QR, just like that and it's picked up my payment address. So what I'm going to do now is click on one over here to verify the ownership of this address. And now it's searching wallets and there we go. It says verified address. This address was found in this wallet with this derivation path. So this derivation path is 84000 and if we look in Sparrow Wallet in our settings, we'll see the same derivation path. So this address was found in this wallet. We can now be confident of that and you can be confident sending a large amount to your Sparrow. All right, so I'm just going to go back to the receive tab now and I'm going to send some Bitcoin to this address from my blue wallet, but you can send from wherever you have funds. Okay, I have just sent some Bitcoin over. And if I look in my transactions tab, we will see this transaction has just appeared. We have 118,000 sats or about $93 in this wallet. Now, if we also look at our UTXOs tab, we will see we now have one UTXO in this cold card wallet. So that is how to receive Bitcoin. This Bitcoin now sits in Sparrow, but Sparrow can't actually send this Bitcoin without the cold card. So what I'll be doing now is showing you how to send Bitcoin from your cold card using Sparrow Wallet. Sparrow Wallet is simply the tool that is going to tell the cold card 
what we want to do, but the cold card is going to do the actual signature of that transaction, and then Sparrow will send it to the Bitcoin network for us. So let's take a look at how that works. Firstly, I'm going to click on the send tab over here, and I'm going to get a Bitcoin address to send the funds to. So here on my phone, I've got Blue Wallet open. I will use the camera and just scan my QR code, just like that, and that is my Bitcoin address. Now it will require a label. I always recommend setting the label to where the funds are going. So I will say to my demo wallet. Now you can set an amount and that can be in either sats or BTC. So for example, if you wanted to send 0.001 Bitcoin, that's how it would look, but I'm going to do the whole amount. So I'm going to click on max over here and now we can set a fee. So Sparrow will automatically set a good fee for you. So generally you can just leave this as is. Right now, fees are very low. They're, they're the cheapest I've seen in a long time and it's recommending I do one sat per byte. So I will leave that as is and uh, you can click on this to make the diagram bigger, but I'm not interested in that. What I need to do now is click on create transaction at the bottom right of my screen then you can review the details here if you like. You can check the address you're sending the funds to, you can check the fee you're paying, and you can just check all the details and the amounts. Everything looks good to me, so I will click on finalize transaction for signing. Now, at this point, we cannot sign the transaction. It is blurred out. We need to sign it with the cold card. So because we're using the cold card queue, which has a QR code scanner, I'm going to click on show QR over here. And I will scan this with my cold card. Here in the cold card, we still have the address verification open. So I'll just click on cancel until I'm back at the home screen. And here we are. What I'll do now is scroll down to scan any QR code and click on enter. Now my QR code is reader is on and we'll scan the QR code on my computer. So there we have the unsigned transaction QR code. Here's my cold card queue and I'm going to point that to the screen and just give it a moment to scan that and there we go. It picked that up and now it's giving me all the transaction details. So what the cold card is doing now is just displaying everything about this transaction. It's saying how much Bitcoin I'm sending. It's telling me the network fee and it should tell me the address over here. Yeah, there is the Bitcoin address. So you can also just make sure that address is correct by checking your receiving end. I can see that address is correct. And if I scroll down one more time, it says press enter to approve and sign transaction. Everything looks fine to me, so I will click on enter. And now it should show me a QR code. There we go. So now here we have the signed Bitcoin transaction which I will need to show now to Sparrow. In Sparrow now, I will click on scan QR code over here and I'm going to show this QR to Sparrow. And there we go. It has picked up the signed transaction from my cold card. So this transaction now has a signature from my cold card using the seed phrase and my private keys. We can go ahead now and click on broadcast transaction to send this to the network. So I'll click on broadcast transaction. And there we go, the funds are now leaving my wallet. So at the top of Sparrow, we now have two tabs open. So this is the signed transaction. I will close that. And this is the transaction we built that was not yet signed. So I'll close that as well. And now we're back in our main wallet. If I click on transactions, we can see we had one coming in and one going out. And then in UTXOs, we now have no UTXOs left and no Bitcoin left. Now, the key thing to understand here is that our cold card contains our seed phrases and our private keys, and Sparrow only contains our public keys. So Sparrow can see our transaction history and it can see our Bitcoin addresses, but it can never send Bitcoin without cold card. If we click on settings, we can see we're using a cold card and that's what makes this setup secure. The seed phrase and the sensitive information never touches the internet. It only touches our cold card device. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers.